Hello friends, today we're going to talk about moving average filters and digital signal processing. This is what we're going to talk about today. What is a moving average filter? What are they used for? What are the basic characteristics of a moving average filter? What's the frequency response? How do we implement them? And then we'll go through a few examples. So what is a moving average filter? It's often called a boxcar filter in digital signal processing applications. I think the reason for that, which we'll cover later, is that all the coefficients are the same value. So you can think of them as a series of boxcars riding along the tracks. So a moving average filter specifically is a simple arithmetic average or mean of the last n samples. And from a digital signal processing point of view, you can think of that as a FIR filter whose coefficients are all the same value. So a moving average filter is a true moving average if the coefficients are 1 over the number of coefficient values, or the average size. In other words, it, it has unity gain. That makes it a true average. Another alternative that's often used is if each coefficient has value 1, then it's not a moving average because it has a gain at DC of n, which is uh, the number of taps in the boxcar filter. It has a low pass frequency response, which makes sense for the concept of an averaging. And in the frequency domain, it has frequency z zeros that are a function of the number of taps or the length of the average. So what are the uses for a moving average filter? We already mentioned fur filtering and these are often used with the name moving average filter as opposed to boxcar filter in the data analysis world. Something that's probably the most common use of this has to do with financial applications. Some financial analysts use moving averages of different lengths like 15 days, 50 days and so on to try to discern what the financial markets are doing. So that's a smoothing application basically. So what are the basic characteristics of a moving average filter? We have a few parameters to work with. The main parameter is the number of taps or the length of the moving average. The other parameter we're going to call B which is the coefficient used for each tap. And kind of by definition a boxcar or moving average filter uses the same coefficient for each tap. And that's what distinguishes a boxcar fur filter from a more general fur filter because a general fur filter would have different coefficient values for each tap. But a boxcar filter or moving average filter always has the same coefficient for each tap. Here's the calculation for the boxcar filter with coefficient b. We're doing the sum of the last n inputs and multiplying those by this value B. Typical values for B are usually 1.0. If you want to make the simplest possible calculation with no multiplications involved or 1 over N if you want to have a true moving average. Now let's look at the time response of this filter. So intuitively the smoothing action of the filter increases as the number of taps increases. So in the financial application a 50-day moving average is going to be smoother than a 15-day moving average for example. The delay also increases with the value of n and intuitively you can imagine that a 50-day moving average is going to show you a delayed output that's more delayed than a 15-day and that's whether they realize it or not why financial analysts are using different values is because they're making a trade-off between smoothing versus delay. So the formula for delay is n minus 1 divided by 2 times fs. So in the 50-day moving average the delay is 49 divided by 2 which is 24 and a half days. Now let's talk about the frequency response of these filters. So in digital signal processing terms, these are linear phase filters, meaning that they have constant delay at all frequencies. We go into linear phase filters in more detail in another video in this series, but uh, basically you can think of them as having 
a delay that does not vary as a function of frequency. And the hallmark of linear phase filters is that the coefficient values are symmetrical around the center coefficient. And since all the coefficients are the same value in a boxcar filter, it will inherently have linear phase. Here's a formula for frequency response. We won't go into a lot of detail on this, but if you look at this from a math point of view, you can see that this has a value of zero at multiples of pi over n. So that means frequencies in practical terms is fs divided by n, 2fs divided by n, 3fs divided by n, etc. So that means if you put in a sine wave at exactly fs divided by n, then you get a zero output after settling. Now let's look at implementation. We have a variety of algorithms we can use to do this. They all result in the same numeric result. This algorithm is very straightforward. We just sum the last n samples, and then we multiply by a gain factor of b. Algorithm 2 is a little more complicated to implement, but is more computationally efficient. First, we sum the first n samples, which is a one-time operation. And after that, you can add the newest sample and subtract the old, oldest sample. So essentially, the new, new sample is added to the sum, and the oldest sample is subtracted from the sum, which gives it this running uh, average characteristic. And then we multiply by our gain factor the, the sum result. Here's another algorithm that makes use of the premise that n is a power of 2. So we la add the last n samples. For example, let's say we add the last 8 samples for a moving average of 8. And then we right shift by the log 2 value of n. So in that case, log 2 of 8 is 3 because 2 to the 3 is 8. And that essentially gives us a a free divide. And this is the kind of thing you would typically use in some sort of hardware implementation like an FPGA or something like that. So if you have some flexibility on this on what the value of n is, then you can pick a power of 2 like 8, 16, 32 or whatever. Next I'm going to show you some examples made with Scope Fur, which is a program that I've been developing off and on for the last 20 years. Uh, it has a capability to design fur filters in a general sense and kind of a user interface that allows you to design boxcar filters very easily. Just so we can work with a nice round number, I'm going to set the sampling frequency to be 1000 Hz. We're using a boxcar filter that has 10 taps. We set the tap value to be 1 over n, in this case 1 tenth, which is calculated for us automatically. So the coefficient values are all the same, this value of 1 tenth, or 0 0.1. They're graphed here as the impulse response, which is just a straight line. We've got frequency response that shows these zeros at the value of fs of 1000 divided by 10 number of taps and that gets us zeros at 100 hertz 200 hertz 300 hertz 400 hertz 500 hertz so that illustrates what we've been talking about which is the zeros of the filter are related to the number of taps for a box car or moving average filter either one. Now let's look at the step response. The step response starts out with all of the filter delay values assumed to be zero. So with a step response we put in all inputs of one and look at the outputs. So in this case we only have one value of one coming in so that gives us one tenth here, two tenths, three tenths, etc. We rise till we get to the full input value of 1.0, and if this graph were to continue, it would uh, just be flat at 1.0 from here on. 
So aside from a ramp up feature, we end up with a final value of 1.0 for our step response. And that's because this has a, uh, this is a true moving average filter with a DC gain of 1.0 or 0 decibels. That concludes our discussion on moving average filters in digital signal processing, also known as boxcar filters in a DSP context. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. Please hit like and subscribe to help support our new DSP Guru channel. Thanks and bye bye.